Hey, welcome to my channel. Do you want to use JavaScript to create an artificial intelligence web app where a user could just say, hey, paint me a picture of a calico playing the guitar, or create an image of a basset hound riding a skateboard, or write me a hundred word essay on why mayonnaise is disgusting? Well, congrats, you found the right video. In this video, we're going to learn how to use GPT, Dolly, and OpenAI uh, to create an artificial intelligence powered web app. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so to get started, we need to have Node.js installed on our computer. Now, yes, obviously you can use OpenAI with different languages, like on their official documentation, the first language they list is Python. However, if you scroll down just a little bit, you see the very next language they list is Node.js. JavaScript and Node is what I'm most familiar with, so that's what I'm going to use. Cool, so in order to use Node, just visit the official Node website, nodejs.org. Go ahead and install the LTS version. Cool, once you've got that installed, I'm just gonna create a brand new folder on my desktop. It's completely empty, you can name it anything. I named it Simple Example. Cool, let's open up that folder in VS Code. Okay, so in this new empty folder, I'm gonna say npm init-y. That's gonna create sort of an empty grocery list of the different packages that we need. And now we're ready to install the OpenAI package. So you would just say npm install open AI. Go ahead and press enter. Cool, so that downloads all the files we need. Now we just wanna create a file where we actually create a script, right? Where we actually program something. So I'm gonna create a new file. You could name it anything, but I'll name it, you know, for example, like index.js. Cool, now in this file, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Uh, the official documentation already has code that we can borrow. So from the official OpenAI website, from their documentation homepage, there are more specific guides about you know text completion or image generation, but I like to get started by just clicking on libraries, and then right where we were just a minute ago where it says Node.js library, here's a bit of snippet code you can just copy and paste to get started. So I'm just gonna select you know these lines of code, copy that, paste it into our file. Cool, so we've already installed the OpenAI package, so we're good to go there. We do, however, need to add our API key. I can't give you a key, it needs to be your secret key. So let me show you how you could get your own key. Go to the official OpenAI website and click on the API link in the top navigation, and then just sign up for a free account. As of this recording, I didn't even need to enter a credit card or any kind of payment. However, it did ask me, you know, what am I going to be using this account for? I haven't tested all the options, but I know that if you click I'm exploring personal use, it's gonna let you go through just fine for absolutely no cost to you. Cool, so just go ahead and get signed up with your account, then actually log into your dashboard on the OpenAI website, okay? And then go ahead and click on you know this little icon or avatar or the first letter of your name. From that menu that appears, just click on this View API Keys link. Cool, so you can see I've already created one key. You won't have any keys listed here yet. Just go ahead and click the button that says create new secret key. Cool, now it's gonna give you this long string of text. Here's the deal, you need to save that somewhere on your computer. Uh, maybe just create a text file on your desktop or you can just you know save it in the VS Code file. But the point is, OpenAI is never gonna show you this full value again. So it's, you know, for your own security, it's up to you to keep track of this value. But with that brand new value in your clipboard, just go back into VS Code and here's what you're gonna do. Where it says API key colon, you know, you're just gonna replace that. So it says, you know, colon, quotes, and then just paste in whatever was in your clipboard right here. Okay, now what do we do next? Well, unfortunately, this example JavaScript code that we borrowed from the official documentation is not going to work right away. Let me explain why. In JavaScript, you can only use the await keyword right here if you're within an asynchronous function. So the documentation is sort of assuming that you're aware of that, right? So here's what we need to do. Down at the very, very bottom of this file, let's just say async function, and you can give it any name you want, like unicorn or pizza. Uh, why don't we name it just like start or go or something generic. So function parentheses curly brackets, Leave the body of the function empty for now, but then right after the function definition, just you know call or execute the function. Cool. Now the idea is that inside the body of this async function, let's just move this code uh, because then the await syntax will actually work if it lives in an async function. So I'm just gonna grab this code, 
uh, just the const response equals code, this block of code, just move that or cut and paste it to live inside this new function. Beautiful. Cool. Now, here's the fun part. Let's give the AI a, a way more interesting or fun prompt than just, you know, say this is a test. I'm going to say, like, write a 90 word essay on why mayonnaise, I mean, it helps if you spell it correctly, I think that's right, is disgusting. Cool. And then for max tokens, I believe it's not a one to one relationship, but I believe it's somewhere in the ballpark that like one word is one token or I don't know, maybe it's not that exact ratio, but I'm just going to bump this up a little bit. The idea is that if you were going to expose this to a public website, you wouldn't want, you know, just strangers to be able to abuse your API and, you know, rack up a lot of tokens and essentially use up your quota really quickly. But since we're just testing this privately, it's not a big deal. Let's give ourselves some space to work with, right? That way you could say like, write a 500 word essay, so on and so forth. Cool, now we're just forgetting one thing and that is to actually like echo out or print onto the screen or the console, you know, the response that the AI is gonna give back to us. So here's what we're going to do. Right after this block of code, but still in the body of our start function, so, you know, so essentially just right below the await line, let's just say, you know, console.log, and then we just want to log out the text that the AI generates. Now, this is actually going to return to us a giant object with, you know, a ton and ton of different properties. And it can be a lot to scroll through and dig through. So in order to know the exact property that you would dig down to actually get the string of text you're looking for, I like to go to the official NPM documentation for the OpenAI package. If you scroll down to their first little bit of example code, uh, on their example code, you can see the last line of code it gives you the exact, you know, you dig into the object called data and then you dig into the object called choices and it's the first array in that and then you look for the text property. So I would actually just borrow that entire final console.log line and then I would just, you know, use that here. Only ours is not named completion, you know, ours is named response. So just change that to response, right? So response.data.choices, the first item in the array.text. Awesome. Let's go ahead and save this and test it out. So you just open up your console and you're just going to say node and then whatever you named your file. So like I named my file index.js. Technically, you don't even need the .js. So just, you know, node and then the file name. Press enter. Whoops, I had a make believe or incorrect API key value. So off camera, I just input my real actual API key. So let me try that one more time. Just node index with the API key in place. You know, sometimes your request might take, you know, three seconds or five or six, seven seconds. Let's give it a minute. Beautiful, let me expand that. So you see mayonnaise is a condiment, just a 90 word essay on why mayonnaise is gross. Cool, so the idea is you can give it any prompt you want. You could say like list, you know, 10 random cities in the United States and then just run that prompt again. So node index, give it a few seconds. Let's see what it gives us. Cool. But you could give it some really fun prompts, like write a song in the style of, you know, singer ABC, or write a poem in the style of, you know, author XYZ. There's a billion videos on the internet and tutorials about how to create really fun text prompts. That's not the point of this video. This video is just to get you up and running within the JavaScript or Node environment. So from here, the sky is the limit. Go do your own research. Beautiful. However, before we bring this video to a close, you might be thinking, hey, this is cool for testing Node locally on my personal computer, but like, what if I wanted to host a web application, you know, publicly up on the web, you know, where I could give the link to my friends and family? Well, there's a million ways to do that, but I would probably argue that the simplest, easiest way to do that would be to use Next.js and then host it for free on the Vercel service. You really don't need to understand anything about DevOps or hosting or server security. They're gonna handle everything for you and it's totally free. And believe it or not, I am not affiliated with Vercel or Next.js. I just think it's an amazing technology. So this is not a video about Next.js. There's already a million tutorials on Next.js, but here's what I wanna do. I've already created this GitHub repository. Uh, you'll find a link to this in the description or in the pinned comment, but it's just, an example of a Next.js website, and literally the only thing you would need to do if you clone this code, all you need to do is go into the .env file, and literally just where it says OpenAI equals, you would just place your OpenAI key right here. 
Doesn't need quotes around it. It's literally just equal sign and then your key. That's the only change you need to make and then your example will be up and running. Now really quick off camera, let me get this example of these files up and running locally. And let me show you how it works. Cool, so I just cloned or copied that code from GitHub. Here it is on my desktop. And I have it open in VS Code. I'm just gonna open up the terminal, say npm install. That's gonna download all the packages that we need. And now before we start up our local server, all you need to do is go into the .env file and where it says, you know, open AI equals, get rid of this value, but you do not need quotes. So just directly include your real API key right here and then go ahead and save and close this file. Cool, so with your API key in place, we're ready to start up our server. So in the command line, you would just say npm run dev. Go ahead and press enter and now just go to your browser in a new tab, visit localhost colon 3000, and that's it. So for example, uh, for text completion, right? Give any instruction, you could say like, write a haiku about JavaScript. Go ahead and press enter. Should be pretty quick. You get the idea. In addition to text completion, I've also set up a page. So down here on the navigation, you can click art. And this is pretty cool. So what do you want a happy painting of? Like we could say, a lake with a tiger and frog in it. Go ahead and press enter. Should take, you know, maybe 10 seconds at the absolute maximum. And <laughs> there you have it. Uh, let me try another one, like uh, Golden Gate Bridge with a red panda on it. Give it a few seconds. Let's see, AI generated this painting, <laughs> I like that. So let me show you how this is working or why this is cool. So if you dig into your code, anything that's in the pages folder, well, let me be more specific. These top level files like index, that's the home page, and then art, that's the, the painting page. These files contain code that's going to be used for both server side and client side React. So this is just the user interface, right? Like the H1, uh, you know, the input field, the button that you click on, the, you know, the navigation down here. However, and here's the really cool part, in the API folder in the pages folder, these files, they're only going to run server side in a secure, trusted, private environment. In other words, the general public is going to see these files like the home page and the art page. The general public is never going to see what lives in these files. It's server side. And what's cool is we're not managing a server. These are just cloud functions or serverless functions. That's why, yes, we included a .env file, but I mean, it would be a horrible practice, but technically you could include your API key right here directly instead of being, even using an environment variable. That would be a bad practice, but technically speaking, you would not be leaking it to the public. This code is truly server side. Now, just to have a little bit of fun, if you go into the file, it's called git painting. I'll show you how I'm creating that image. So it's really similar to the create text uh, completion, only for the prompt, I'm giving it a bit of a hint. So I'm saying a wet on wet oil painting of blank, whatever the user types in, by Bob Ross. So that's gonna you know, influence the prompt. It's gonna look a certain way, right? So this is why like if you say uh, a snowy mountain in a forest or you know whatever, it's gonna look like a wet on wet oil painting by Bob Ross. So just like with the text prompts, with the image prompts, the possibilities are limitless. This is not a tutorial about coming up with the, you know, the absolute most interesting or coolest possible prompts. But the idea is from here, the sky is the limit for you. Go create something cool, right? Come up with your own fun idea for a prompt. You know, you're just inputting the user's value here, so on and so forth. And then anyways, just to bring it full circle. So the example of, you know, art.js, this is the client side JavaScript. It's just gonna make an asynchronous fetch request to our API endpoint, right? And the git painting corresponds to this file, and these are running server side. So you're not leaking your API key to the public. Beautiful. Now, from here, you're probably thinking, well, this is cool. How could I host this application actually up on the web instead of just, you know, local host? Well, very simple. Right now in a new tab, just go ahead and sign up for a completely free Vercel account. You can host Next.js applications just about anywhere, but Vercel makes it as easy as humanly possible. So once you have your totally free Vercel account, all you would need to do is push everything that we just included here up to a GitHub repo. 
Now, just a tip, make your GitHub repo that you're gonna create of these files, make it private instead of public because I have not told the git ignore file to ignore.env, right? So you don't wanna publicly host your private key up on GitHub for the whole world to see. Normally in the real world, you would never include your .env file in your GitHub repo. You would just actually go on to your hosting provider and add environment variables directly on the server environment. But to make this example, you know, as easy as possible to just copy from my GitHub and push up, I've done it this way. So as long as you make your repo private, you'll be okay. Then back in your Vercel dashboard, just look for the new button to create like a new project. So you can see I'm just at slash new for the address. And then we're just gonna import from Git. So you can see I have a repo on my GitHub. It's a private repo. I named it test for YouTube. It's literally just the same exact files that we have here in VS Code that we copied from my GitHub, right? But create your own private GitHub on your GitHub account, connect, you know, give your Vercel account permission to connect to your GitHub account, and then you can just import. From this file, all of the default options are beautiful. It knows that it's a Next.js project, so it's gonna create those serverless, you know, server-side functions for us. Just go ahead and click deploy. And that's really it. From here, it probably will take, I would say, less than like 25 seconds. So it's building. I'll check back in with you once it's finished. Awesome. So you can see it just finished. And then you, know, you just click this link, open in a new tab. Beautiful. And obviously yours is going to have a different address. But the point is you can share your address, whatever yours is, with your friends, family, the entire world. So let me give it a quick test. What color is the sky on a clear and sunny day? One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, cool. Usually a bright, vivid blue, we can click on art. Let's say, you know, a purple elephant in a swimming pool. Give it a few seconds, let's see what it gives us. It's working, it's working. Beautiful, close enough. So you can share your link with your friends and family. Awesome, that is gonna bring this video to a close. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy my full premium courses over on Udemy. In the description for this video, you'll find a link to this page on my website with heavily discounted coupons to join all of my Udemy courses at the lowest possible price. So I've got a course about React, I've got a course about you know JavaScript, both client-side and server-side, WordPress development, databases, Laravel, so on and so forth. Cool. With these coupons, you can usually join one of my courses for the price of maybe like two trips to a cafe. Anyways, thank you so much for watching until the very end of this video. I hope you feel like you learned something. And stay tuned for more web development tutorials. Take care.